The players filed their lawsuit with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or the EEOC. That is the U.S. government agency tasked with enforcing anti-discrimination laws. We spoke to its former chairperson, Ida Castro, about what the players can expect. Castro is now a vice president and chief diversity officer at the Commonwealth Medical College, which is located in the U.S. state of Pennsylvania. Well, the players, the Equal Pay Act um, is modest in terms of the benefits it provides. So it's, it's basically damages that ha they have incurred. So whatever proven inequities might have existed, the employer, if found, you know, that they, uh, in fact, discriminated because they were women, they would need, the employer would need then to pay the women the differentials in every respect, and the employer actually may be subject to a fine, but that, that then gets other findings of facts, right, and into play. Uh, the issue of unequal pay for equal work is, of course, not isolated to sports. In general, women earn less than men. I don't, I don't think that's a surprise to you. The National Women's Law Center located at, looked at it, I should say, by ethnicity. It found Latina women earn the least of any female group, just 54 cents for every dollar a man earns. Um, you were the first Latina to serve as chairperson at the EEOC. Are there barriers in the United States unique to Latinas? What, what did you find coming up uh, through the ranks? So Latinas uh, have, what I've always observed is that, of course, um, there's a question of communication, there's a question of willingness to come forward and use the governmental tools that exist to enforce laws. Um, generally speaking, Latinas have a tendency of not wanting to rock the boat. Um, many of them work in areas uh, that make them vulnerable to being fired and not having recourse to support their families. And many of them actually don't even understand that these rights exist and how to go about enforcing them or having the resources to get legal counsel to be able to advise them on, on how to best proceed. Yeah, you're, you're talking about Latina women, but when I was listening to you, um, isn't it true, though, that women just in general, I mean, it's difficult to make blanket statements, but, but isn't there a tendency among a lot of women to, to also have that propensity not to want to rock the boat, not want to push the envelope, and perhaps employers uh, capitalize on that? Well, employers, in fact, capitalize on that. But uh, I think that the problem has also been the application of the laws. Like, for example, if you look at the cases involving Equal Pay Act, you will see they're not that easy to prove. So uh, it, it's pretty uh, stringent, and you have to meet all of the thresholds involved in order to prevail. I mean, companies actually can fire you for uh, either obtaining or talking about wages in many cases. So how to equalize that, what it would require is for the company to say that this is a value of the company and the company reviewing its practices and if and when they discover these disparities to allow the women to move forward in the wage process uh, quicker so that they can catch up. Edith, thanks so much for your time.